Hello, uh, let us now know about this bone. This bone actually we call it hip bone, but in, rea in reality it is a nameless bone. Hence, we can call it as os innominatum. And since it is present in the region of hip, it is called hip bone. So, this hip bone is made up of three ilium, ischium and pubis. It is a mixture of three bones, ilium, the upper expanded part being the ilium, the lower posterior wider part being the ischium and the lower anterior part being the pubis. These are paired bones. So, for the side determination, the expanded fan shaped expanded part called the ilium should be above. So, it should not be like this. Second point is the acetabulum. This is acetabulum where the head of the femur lodges and this should face laterally. And the pubic symphysis or the pubis bone should lie in front. Hence, I can say that this belongs to right side. If I hold it wrong, the pubis is becoming back. It is pubic is facing backwards which is wrong. So, the thin part, the pubis should lie in front, acetabulum should face laterally, the ilium should lie above. This is, this belongs to the right side and to keep it in anatomical position, the anterior superior, this is anterior superior iliac spine and this is pubic symphysis, this should lie in same coronal plane, this should lie in a same coronal plane with the pubic tubercle, this is pubic tubercle and this is ischial spine, these two should lie in same horizontal plane. I repeat, the anterior superior iliac spine and pubic symphysis should lie in same coronal plane with the pubic tubercle and ischial spine lying in same horizontal plane. So, this is all about the anatomical position. Now, let us consider do only with this bone that is the ilium. The ilium it consists of upper end and lower end. Upper end is called iliac crest. Upper end is called as iliac crest which extends from the anterior superior iliac spine to posterior superior iliac spine. So, this is the iliac crest which consists of an outer lip. This one is the outer lip and this one is the inner lip and in between the intermediate area. I will be talking about few important attachments or few important things in relation to the iliac crest which everyone should know. This iliac crest in its upper part you find a thickening, you can see something it is a thickened part here. So, this is called as the tubercle of iliac crest, this is called tubercle of iliac crest, which lies around 5 centimeters behind the anterior superior iliac spine, this is anterior superior iliac spine, this is tubercle. If you join the two tubercles of either sides that forms the trans tubercular plane, a plane passing connecting the tubercle of one side with the tubercle of other side hip bone and that passes through L5 spine and that is called as the trans tubercular plane. And this iliac crest also has a highest point, whichever area you feel it is most highest, pl highly placed that if you join with the same area of the opposite side that is called as the supra crestal plane. So, trans tubercular plane and supra crestal plane. These are the two planes which are derived from the iliac crest. Is it clear? Now, coming to the attachments of this iliac crest, let us divide this iliac crest into ventral segment, ventral two third like this and dorsal one third. It is divided into ventral segment, ventral two thirds and dorsal one third. So, the outer lip of the iliac crest, you have the deep fascia of the thigh that is fascia lata is attached. To the outer lip of the iliac crest, the fascia lata. To the outer lip, 
from the anterior superior iliac spine to the tubercle that is only first 5 centimeters it is the origin of muscle tensor fascia lata tensor fascia lata and on to the outer lip in its ventral two thirds the insertion of external oblique muscle of abdomen external oblique muscle of abdomen similarly on the outer lip in its dorsal segment you find the origin of latissimus dorsi and even the origin of gluteus maximus is it clear so the for the outer lip you remember these five things fascia lata tensor fascia lata external oblique origin of latissimus dorsi and origin of gluteus maximus for the intermediate area it is internal oblique muscle only one structure that is the internal oblique muscle and in the inner lip and in the inner lip uh, to the ventral segments and to the dorsal segment to the ventral segment it is transversus abdominis muscle fascia transversalis and fascia iliaca to the inner lip in its ventral two thirds transversus abdominis fascia transversalis and fascia iliaca to the dorsal segment inner lip dorsal segment you have two that is quadratus lumborum muscle and thoraco lumbar fascia quadratus lumborum and thoraco lumbar fascia i repeat for the inner lip if you see to the inner lip there are five structures in its ventral two thirds it is transversus abdominis muscle fascia transversalis and fascia iliaca for the dorsal one third number 4 the thoraco lumbar fascia and quadratus lumborum muscle so this is all about the iliac crest which is very important now coming to the anterior end it is called anterior superior iliac spine which gives attachment to a muscle called sartorius along with this anterior superior iliac spine the notch upper half of the notch below it also it gives origin to a muscle called sartorius this is anterior inferior iliac spine which gives attachment to straight head of rectus femoris muscle origin along with ilio femoral ligament so this anterior inferior iliac spine gives attachment to a muscle origin of a muscle straight head of rectus femoris and a ligament ilio femoral ligament this rectus femoris has one more head that is reflected head which takes origin just above the groove above the acetabulum this is acetabulum just above it there is a groove from here the reflected head of rectus femoris takes origin whereas straight head takes origin from the anterior inferior iliac spine similarly this is posterior superior iliac spine and this is posterior inferior iliac spine now coming to the borders this is the anterior border which extends from the anterior superior iliac spine to anterior inferior similarly this is a posterior border extending from the posterior superior iliac spine to posterior inferior and this one is the medial border this one is the medial border which is continuous below with arcuate line and divides the two surfaces now coming to the surfaces this is a medial surface this is a gluteal or lateral surface the medial surface with this medial border it is divided it is dividing the medial surface into iliac fossa in front which gives origin to medial in its medial two thirds to the iliacus muscle just coinciding with that of subscapularis arising from the subscapular fossa of scapula similarly iliac fossa giving origin to iliacus if you know the insertion of subscapularis it is to the lesser tubercle so definitely the ins insertion of this muscle has to be greater uh, sorry lesser trochanter of femur 
forming a traction type of epiphysis. Okay. And this one is a sacropelvic surface which articulates with the sacrum to form sacroiliac joint. Sacroiliac joint, a synovial type of the joint. So, this is medial surface. Coming to the last part that is the gluteal surface which consists of a faint lines called, this one is a posterior gluteal line, this one is anterior gluteal line and this is inferior gluteal line, posterior gluteal line, anterior gluteal line, inferior gluteal line. The region, the posterior gluteal line and the region behind it, this along with the outer lip of the iliac crest gives origin to gluteus maximus. Similarly, from the posterior gluteal line to the anterior gluteal line, the region in between that is gluteus medius. Between the anterior gluteal line and inferior gluteal line, it is the origin of gluteus minimus. Gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, gluteus minimus. If, we, if I have to draw here like this, the gluteal surface, there is a posterior gluteal line is this one, anterior gluteal line and inferior gluteal line. So, behind the posterior gluteal line, this muscle is gluteus maximus. Between the posterior and anterior, it is gluteus medius. Between the anterior and inferior, it is gluteus minimus. So, this is all about only the two-thirds part of this hip bone, that is the ilium. Thank you.